the Quran says in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse 43, that the clouds, they join together, they form into a heap, and then water emerges from the clouds. Quran says in Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse 48, that how does the water rises, form into clouds, the clouds fragmentate, they become into pieces, and then water falls from the ground. The Quran speaks about the water cycle in great detail in several places. In Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse 57. In Surah Rod, chapter number 13, verse number 17. In Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 14 and 49. In Surah Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 36. It mentioned Surah Fatir, chapter 35, verse 9. In Surah Yasin, chapter number 36, verse number 34. In Surah Jasha, chapter number 45, verse number 5. In Surah Qaf, chapter number 50, verse number 9 and 10. In Surah Waqya, chapter number 56, verse number 68 to 70. In Surah Mul, chapter 67, verse number 30. In Surah Tariq, chapter 86, verse number 11. I can go on and go on quoting and giving references only of the verses which the Quran speaks about water cycle. The Quran speaks about the water cycle in great detail. Who would have mentioned about this water cycle, which we learned in the 16th century, in 1580? Quran mentioned 1400 years ago. In the field of geology, today the geology they tell us the earth, the radius of the earth on which we live is about 3750 miles. And the deeper layers, they are hot and fluid. They cannot sustain life. The more you go on the top, it becomes harder. And the superficial crust on which we live is a, short, is a solid shell. And it's very thin. Hardly 1 to 30 miles in thickness. And there are high chances that this superficial crust on which we live, it will shake. Today the geology, they tell us, it is due to the folding phenomena which gives rise to mountain ranges, which prevents the earth from shaking. What the geologists discovered recently, the Quran mentions 14 years ago. In Surah Naba, chapter 78, verse 6 to 7, the Quran says, We have made the earth as an expanse, while Jabala Autada and the mountains as stakes. The Arabic word used is Autad, meaning tent pegs, meaning stakes. And when we see a tent peg, it's hammered into the ground. Only a small portion is above the ground. The major portion is deep underground. The Quran says the mountains are like tent pegs. And today science tells us that the mountain has got roots which go deep underground. What we see on top of the ground is only a small portion. It's like a tip of an iceberg. When we see the iceberg floating, the portion above the water is hardly 10%. 90% is below water. Similarly, the mountain that we see on top of the earth is a small portion. The major portion is deep underground. The Quran mentions in Surah Yashia, chapter 88, verse number 19, as well as Surah Naziat, chapter number 79, verse number 32, that we have placed on the earth mountain standing firm. And today, if we analyze, in most of the universities, in the subject of geology, the main guidebook for subject of geology is a book by the name The Earth. It has various authors. One of the authors' name is Dr. Frank Press, who was previously the president of the Academy of Sciences of USA and was also the science, advi science advisor to the ex-president of USA, Jimmy Carter. He mentioned in this book about the function of the mountains and he draws the mountain and shows that the mountains have got deep, have got deep roots. They are wedge shaped and go deep underground just like a tent peg. And Dr. Frank Press says that the function of the mountain is to prevent the earth from shaking. And this is exactly what is mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago. In Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 31. In Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 15. That we have placed on the earth mountain standing firm, lest it would shake with you. 
So the Quran specifies the functions of the mountain to prevent the earth from shaking, which Dr. Frank Press has mentioned a few decades earlier. Imagine what the scientists have discovered recently, Quran has mentioned 14 years ago. In the field of oceanology, Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse 53, that it is he who has let free two bodies of flowing water, one sweet and palatable, the other salty and bitter. Though they meet, they do not mix. There is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. Quran repeats the message in Surah Rahman, chapter 55, verse number 19 and 20. Marjal Bahraini al Taqiyan. It is he who has let free two bodies of flowing water. Though they meet, they do not mix. There is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. Previously, the commentator of the Quran used to wonder, what does the Quran mean by saying that two waters meet? They knew there were two types of water, one salt, one salty and the other sweet. But they could not understand what does the Quran mean by saying these two types of water meet, but there is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. After science is advanced, we have come to know recently that whenever one type of water flows into the other type of water, whenever salt water flows into the sweet water, it loses its constituents and gets homogenized into the water it flows. This transitional homogenizing area, this area today scientists call as transitional homogenizing area, this 